Hi everyone, it's Colleen Hearn, English teacher and ed tech enthusiast, here to teach you a little bit about using Padlet. Padlet is a web-based app that allows its users to create what the company calls online bulletin boards. In addition to the website, found at Padlet.com, there's also an app that's free to users of devices by Apple, Android, and Amazon. In addition to being able to create an account, you can also log in with your Google, Facebook, or Microsoft accounts. For our school, we all have Google accounts, so that's the option that I use, as well as the option I tell students to use. When you log into Padlet, you'll see your homepage, which includes your existing Padlets, as well as buttons to make a new Padlet, join an existing Padlet, view a gallery of sample Padlets, and upgrade to premium features. Now, let's check out some sample Padlets so you can get some inspiration. For our first sample Padlet, a teacher has created a Word of the Day activity. She has posted her word, Fascinate, as well as directions for what students should do. Below, you can see each student posted his or her own example sentence that uses the word Fascinate. For our next sample, a teacher has created a word wall for her science class. On this wall, she has posted words tied to various units. Under the words, she's posted videos, websites, diagrams, and other materials for students to look at if they need to review or need help understanding a concept. Our third sample is a professional development Padlet for the educator. Here, you can see various teachers have contributed ideas to the Padlet on student creativity. My English department recently used Padlet following a professional development movie viewing about Mr. Rogers. For our Padlet, we started a discussion board where everyone posted one initial thread and then replied to others. This was a great way for us to share our ideas as well as provide feedback to our administrators about the PD. Here is an example of a bell ringer Padlet. The teacher posted a question about what life would be like without bees. As students entered the room and got settled, they answered the question. This would be a great intro to a lesson about pollination or potentially even the endangerment of honeybees. Students completing individual or group research projects can also use Padlet to keep track of their sources. This Padlet is a literature circle Padlet that I created for my students during our dystopian literature circle unit. I created a template that had week one, two, three, and four, and students posted based on their literature circle roles under each week. This is my most recent Padlet creation. At the end of the English 12 semester, we are having our students read their own nonfiction books for independent reading. My colleagues and I created this template, which is built already with three weeks of activities under each week, there are the days of the week and an activity for them to do. Students will fill this out as they read their books and receive grades for each week. Here are some other ideas that you can implement with Padlet. If you would like more inspiration, click on the gallery link on your Padlet homepage. On this page, you'll see mock or sample Padlets for all kinds of purposes to include chore lists, New Year's resolutions, workplace collaboration, and more. Now you're ready to create your very first Padlet. To create your Padlet, click on Make a Padlet on your homepage. From here, you'll see numerous different setups for your Padlet. There's the wall, a canvas, a stream, a grid, a shelf, and a back channel, which is kind of like a discussion. The wall is the easiest one to start with. From here, you can customize your title as well as a subtitle. The subtitle is where I usually put directions for students or participants.
Now you can change your background. There are numerous photos provided by Padlet. However, you can even upload your own background by clicking Add Your Own. Today, I'm going to pick something fun. Donuts. From here, you can click whether you want posts to be light or dark, you can select your font, and you can even change the icon that appears next to the title. There are many other display settings, like displaying students' names, the order you want your posts to appear, profanity filters, the ability to allow comments and likes on posts, as well as tags and other things. You can also change your URL to be a little more student-friendly. Once you click Next, you'll be taken to the People and Privacy page. This is where you can select who can see your Padlet, as well as what others are able to post on your Padlet. I usually choose Can Write. This way, students can add to the Padlet, but they are unable to delete anyone else's posts. Now you're all set, and you can start posting on your Padlet. These instructions on how to post will apply for both teachers and students. To post, click the pink plus sign in the bottom right corner. You'll see a post pop up. You can edit the title as well as the body of the post. For this particular Padlet on the giver, I'm asking my students to make a prediction about the title of the book. I'm placing directions in the body of my post. Students will comment with their answers. In addition to just text, you can also post other things. If you look in the bottom or click on the three dots, you can upload files, post internet links, attach a Google search, upload things like pictures, videos, voice recordings, screen grabs and cast, a drawing, a map, or even link to other Padlets. If you have additional questions about Padlet, are looking for more inspiration, or need help in person, be sure to email me at colleen underscore hern at colonialheights.net.